So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Victor. I'm work working for CERN. I've been working here for slightly more than a year. And I wanted to talk about uh, spring data pro projections when things don't go right. Your application is slightly old and you cannot implement the things you would want to implement them. So, first, we I would like to show what is a projection? Because maybe some people don't know what it is. So imagine that we have uh, an object, say a cylinder like in the picture. There are many ways of, uh, of seeing a cylinder, like you could see it from the top, and you could technically see that it looks like a square, or you could see it from the side and you could see that it's, uh, it's a circle. So yes, it can be defined as a partial view. In the case of a class in Java, it would be taking part of the fields in the class. And as a small mathematical fact, it would mean that uh, if a class has n fields, uh, there are uh, a possible amount of 2 to the power of n minus 1 uh, projections. So next, why are uh, projections useful? So mainly, one of the, one of the things, uh, everything is related to using APIs in this case. And uh, the first one is that the, we would want to reduce the throughput which means that sometimes if you want to send some information to a web browser, for, for example, uh, you do not want to send a full class that has a lot of fields and a lot of garbage information that you are not interested. Nowadays, internet is fast, but we would also want to have uh, some better implementations and not give uh, send tons of megabytes of information that are completely useful for the, useless for the client. Then uh, we will also have some uh, security issues. Uh, perhaps in our backend, our big class contains some sensitive information that we don't want to expose through an, uh, through an API. And we would want to project that and only send to, to the client the fields that we want to show. For instance, I will show an, an example in a few slides of that. And uh, there is the, also the possibility of exposing a group of constants that are uh, inside an enum through the API. Perhaps you want to use them uh, in a React frontend like we do for, a, for our application. Then, uh, the core of our implementation uh, is the class entity projections, which has two methods. The first one is the project of uh, the, it, it, it takes uh, the entity and the, the object and the class that we want to project. And the other method is just the collection of the entities that we want to project through the, through the class. Uh, it's as, as simple as if you have, uh, for example, uh, an object that takes uh, name, surname, and age, and then you pass uh, that object. And the other class would be a projection that only has as fields the name and the, and the surname. Then, uh, this is the implementation of the single entity. It just creates a new proxy, creates the new class, and calls the entity invocation handler passing the entity. I'll show in a, in a minute what this uh, entity invocation handler uh, looks like. And uh, then, for projecting a collection of entities, uh, it follows pretty much the same procedure. First, it checks if the entity's uh, list is empty. Otherwise, in that case, it returns an empty list. Pretty simple. And otherwise, it just do, it just creates a stream and does the same procedure as the uh, first method, but with uh, with a mapping. Uh, under the hood, what we have is uh, the this entity invocation handler which uh, implements the interface of invocation handler that we have uh, in Java. It just takes the type. And uh, the implementation of the class uh, overrides first the invoke method that comes from the implemented interface, uh, which just uh, gets all the methods that the projected uh, class has and uh, invokes the, the given method that is, that is needed, that is the second uh, in the argument list. The args, uh, although it is mentioned in the invoke, is not needed because we are only interested in using the get methods, and get methods for uh, DTOs, in the case of our APIs, get methods are, uh, don't take any, any arguments, so 
that could be one of the improvements I, I will mention later. And then the get method, uh, as you can see, it just uh, gets the list of methods as a stream uh, for the entity class, finds the one that is needed, and if it doesn't find it, it just uh, throws, a, throws an exception. Then the use case. Uh, to give a little bit of story about our application, this is EDH. EDH stands for the uh, Electronic Document Handling. What do we need to use this application? Well, first, documents, of course. But after that, what we need uh, is people. Uh, our person class is defined on the right, and maybe you can see that there is a scroll bar on the side, because there are a lot of methods in this class. Our people are very well defined, and there are some sensitive data there that we do not want to, to share. Whereas this interface, which is the person suggestion, would be an interface that would be used uh, for our APIs when we want to search for a, for a person uh, in a search bar in other applications, and we expose that through, a, through our API. Someone searches, for example, my name and surname, and the API searches and returns my person ID, my username, my full name, and my organization unit, which is the place I, I belong in the organization. And if you check just a little bit more the person interface on the right, you can see that the methods share the, share the same name, like the first one, get person ID is shared. It's one of the first one mentioned there. So they have to share the name in order to, to be able to do this projection. Uh, so what it is used, as I was saying, we would want to, in this case, expose an API. So in this case, we have this person controller, which is a, a REST controller. And you can see in the bottom that we are declaring these entity projections as a private final. We have the required args constructor because the entity projections is a component, and it's injected directly. And then uh, we have a method, in this case, get person suggested that will call the person service. It would get the person suggestion, but as you can see in the bottom, the person suggestion returns a list of person. But we do, we do not want to expose all the information that a person can have in our backend, and we would want to project only the information that we are interested in showing, like the person ID, the name, and my organization unit. So in this case, what we do is calling the entity projections, the project method, we pass the list, which is the person service dot get person suggesting. In this case, we pass a list, but if we were only interested in one person, the other method that I showed would be the one used. And then we pass the projecting class, which in this case is the person suggesting. Uh, future improvements, because nothing is perfect. Uh, we would want to convert the entity projections uh, filled in the classes into an annotation because it looks uh, cleaner. Uh, my idea was to have some kind of add projectable into the class uh, in the style of uh, add SLF, uh, SLF4j and use the logger. And uh, other improvement would be to ignore the args argument in the invoke method of the entity invocation handler because, as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, not as generic as uh, we want because we only have uh, get methods uh, used for the projection, so the args are never used. Although another improvement would be to project other methods that uh, could take arguments, but in this case it's uh, not needed. And as a matter of fact, uh, always there's a, a tiny improvement. When I was checking the code yesterday, I noticed that there was an unused import. I will open a PR to remove it just for <laughs> the sake of uh, good quality code. And that's just it. It was very quick. I hope uh, you learned uh, a bit. And thank you. <laughs>